Welcome back to Transport Fever 2, everybody. I hope you're having a good one because I am so excited to be back. I have some ideas that I'm so keen to put into practice. I hope they work. If you didn't catch the last episode, you might not know what my ideas are, but I'm certain that they are genius. I'm certain. I'm, <laughs> I'm absolutely certain that they are, in fact, genius tier ideas. So, long story short, we're going to start moving slag from Laredo to the Pueblo West station, train station, that is. We're going to start moving that slag from Pueblo West all the way down to Salinas, where it's going to be loaded onto a wagon taken over to the Warren Construction Materials plant turned into construction materials, and then it's going to go to three places. It's going to go to Philadelphia. It's going to go to Fargo, and it's going to go to those two places via wagon because we might as well. It's also going to go to Salinas. I didn't even notice that Salinas wanted construction materials. It's going to go to four places. Salinas, Philly, Fargo. Which is fun to say. Salinas, Philly, Fargo. Salinas, Philly. I, every time I say Philly, by the way, I'm reminded of that Netflix show, Somebody Feed Phil, which is, I didn't realize had five seasons. I started watching that years ago and really enjoyed it. And I recently found out there's like three seasons I haven't watched and I'm very excited about it. But anyway, Long story short. Um, yeah, so we're going to take it to those three places. We're also going to bring it back to the train station using the same wagons that take it there in the first place, load it onto the train that brought the slag down here, and we're going to bring it back up to Pueblo, over to Laredo, and we're going to deliver it there as well. It's a bit of a tall order. I'm not 100% sure it's going to work perfectly, but I'm willing to give it a shot. So let's go ahead and start with some streets. Let's bring a, let's bring a bit of a road out of here. And we'll go ahead and curve it sort of this way a little bit. We'll go ahead and bring a nice straight section road right about there. And we'll curve this guy to right about there. And that seems pretty good. I could go for a bit of a straighter line over there, but honestly, not super stressed about it. This will do the job. Uh, as for the Salinas delivery, it'll probably come through Warren, and I'm not super stressed about that. This is going to be a lot of... It's going to be a lot of busy work, though. So let's try and stay on top of it. We need a truck unload stop in Salinas, which can be right there. We're also going to need a one, one hell of a truck station here. So we have... What, three? So we need four platforms? We need like one input, three output, because the input's also going to be an output. So uh, three on the left, one on the right should be fine. And I guess what we do is we just sort of slap this thing right about, I want to say right about there. And that should be all right. As for this guy, this guy is now going to need a second platform. So let's just get that going. It also has these nice little passenger buildings. Are these new? They look they look new. I don't think I don't feel like I've ever seen these before. They do look kind of new. I like them a lot. The platform's nice too, but we obviously don't really need passenger platforms here. Anyway, long story short, we need to look at bringing the slag down here. So the slag is going to be coming out of this place. That's already set up. It's going to come through Laredo. It is essentially going to come along that road and down to here. I wonder if we should just bring it along, you know, a road straight out there, though. That seems like unnecessary expenditure, though. So let's just do... We need a truck station. It just needs one platform. Uh, so it can live, I guess, essentially right about... I guess right about there is probably good enough. Not really super stressed about it being absolutely perfect, but right there is pretty good. So that's going to be slagged from here to there. And then that's also going to bring the bricks back into Laredo, which need to be dropped off uh, right about there, actually. Does Laredo already have bricks coming in? I don't think it does. No, it doesn't. Okay. So let's set up that line really quickly. So basically, we're going from here. And platform four is good. That's what we're looking for. We're going from there to there, and that's great, to there, and then back. 
so let's get this line to be light blue and we're going to rename it to road cargo it is laredo and the naming of this one's going to be fun uh slag to train uh slash i guess brick to laredo is how we'll look at that so that's gonna need to be set up very specifically so laredo transfer is gonna be a case of you load up on uh slag which looks like what exactly it's this one i think yep load up on slag at weblo halt we need you to unload the slag and be loading up on construction material and then here you're unloading everything so that's now set up properly that's our first line and that's great that's that's what we need uh, the train can be configured shortly because we now need to do the line that brings the slag to the construction materials. So, add a new line. It's going to be from here, going to there, and it needs to be going to platform uh, number four in this case. So, this is going to be set up to pick up a bunch of slag. It is also going to be dropping off construction material back there. And then the inverse happens here. It's picking up construction material and dropping off slag. So that's now sorted. And I guess this is Salinas. So we'll do, what is this? Road cargo. It is Salinas. And it's going to be slag to brick. Is how we'll look at that one. So Salinas is this orange color, which is pretty good. It's technically Warren. I guess it is, yeah, it is technically Warren, isn't it? It's a bit closer to that. So Warren, slag to brick, and that's okay. So that's now actually gonna be pink and that's all right. So that's gonna go back and forth. And now we just need the lines that go everywhere else, which is gonna be kind of crazy. Uh, so now we're gonna do a Salinas line. So from here on platform three, going down into Salinas. I don't love that this is going to be empty on the way back. And looking at it, uh, I think it's going to have to be. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be. This line could, in theory, split its construction material. It could have 50% dropped off here, 50% dropped off here, but that seems unnecessary. I think we'll just keep it really simple. Road cargo, uh, Salinas. It's going to be, um, I guess, brick to just Salinas brick essentially so we'll make that orange and that's now an entire setup right we have two destinations for the bricks that get made in Warren East so we need a train is what we need I don't know where my train is right now but I need this train right here and I need to manage it I need to edit it and how do we do this please oh no Oh, I got carried away. I did. I knew it was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. All right. So to move bricks, we need to use a flat car. And to move slag, we need to use a gondola. But I think that's okay. Because if I go one, two, three, and then... <laughs> One, two, three. It's 1 1.2 million for that. But we have the train. Is the train too long for a station? Is now going to be my question. I don't think it is. I think it's still kind of within the bounds of, uh, of a station here. So we're okay. So this needs to be changed now. I need to manage this line and say in... Oh my god. In Sol... <laughs> right. Um, in, in Salinas, what are you doing? What are you, what are you unloading in Salinas right now? Uh, you're going to be unloading oil, I think. Yeah. You're unloading oil. You're loading. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't remember. Um, <laughs> all right. Yeah. You're unloading oil. You are unloading slag. You are loading bricks. I think that's the setup that we're looking for down here, right? So unload oil, unload slag, load up on bricks. In Pueblo, you are exclusively loading up on crude oil. And in Pueblo West, you are, oh boy, 
You're going to be unloading construction materials. You're going to be loading slag. You are going to be unloading crude oil. You're going to be loading oil. I think that's everything. I think that's all I need to do. So, now that that's done, I need to put vehicles on the bricks production line here, on the bricks to Salinas line, and on the slag to train line. Oh boy, that's going to be a lot of balancing, but I can figure it out. So give me five of these for 100,000, and they're going to be that lovely blue color, and they're going to be Laredo slag to train. And then I need to configure that line. So now we've got vehicles coming out of Warren, and they're going to their respective lines. We should have some slag production up here at some point. I would sincerely hope we don't have any iron in there. Interesting, iron is uh, absolutely not a surplus there. That's slightly concerning. What are you bringing in? Coal. Let me have a look at those lines. So Laredo, coal is 95, iron is 98. Let me pin this, go to iron, go to manage vehicles and give me one more. That brings it down to 94. So iron should become a bit of a surplus, which would be fantastic. Now in theory, we should end up seeing some slag production here. We should see it get dropped off there. Uh, this train that we have, I have no idea where it is right now. Uh, it is here. So this guy is hauling nothing right now, and that's kind of the point, and that's okay. I think we need to get ourselves another train uh, just to make this all a little bit more effective, I guess. Uh, but we'll see how things go. Uh, slag is now being produced, though, which is fantastic news, so that will get moved to the train. So in theory, this entire production line, this crazy, crazy setup that I'm going for will work in theory. And if it eventually becomes productive, which to be honest, I don't suspect it will because I'm, I, well, I just don't suspect it will, you know, it, it'd be nice. That's all I'm saying. It'd be nice. Now let's see here. I, I realize all my frequencies and my rates are all over the place as well. So, oh boy, I guess it's the rate that's most important when we're going from road to train, right? So, slag to brick, slag to train, brick to, oh boy, seven minutes with a rate of seven. So, that's not very good. But that's dependent on the steel and slag, which is a rate of 31. So, we need to pin this, we need to manage the vehicles, duplicate all of these. Get that to 14, duplicate all of them again, and get that to 28. That was the right line, right? Yeah, it was. So that's now going to be pumping out more slag, which can go in the train more regularly. The train has a throughput of 39, or a rate of 39, which I guess divided by 3 is, what, 13? So... The rate might actually be too high for slag, but we'll see how that turns out. Uh, Salinas Brick is going to be an interesting one because technically speaking, one slag is going to turn into two bricks. So if we have a rate of 30, then this can in theory be producing 60 per year. I, I Roughly, I, that's sort of how that math works in my head. I don't know if that's actually, you know, how it actually works. But in my head, that's how that math is is going. So... We'll deal with it for now, is, is what I'm saying. Uh, I'm also thinking that while we have a bit of money, I want to very quickly take out this corner because I want to do this and I want to do something a bit like, something a bit like that. I know it's a bit of a weird setup, but what I can do is just have this road sort of come straight out and just curve to there. It's a bit expensive to do it that way, but I I just figure that doing it this way is going to give us a bit of a straighter shot over here, and it should, you know, shave off a little bit of time, which is going to be ideal. And I mean, if we look at that line now, it, uh, I think it's recalculating. Yeah, it's got 31 now, so that shave, you know, that gave us an extra, what, three units of slag per year? 
so that's not bad. Uh, looking overall at my balance, the train is losing tremendous amounts of money right now, which makes sense. Uh, the Laredo line and Slag line and the coal line, they're all losing money. I think we're losing more than we're making right now, which is a bit of a pickle. We might want to do something about that, especially since we're not moving as much uh, oil as we might want to be. Because, you know, I'm an idiot and forgot that it's two to one on the ratio. So it's a bit of a problem, but I think, I think we'll manage. It's just going to take time for all these lines to start doing what I need them to be doing. I'm also thinking I could probably bring tools from Philadelphia down to Salinas and get that place going really nicely too. Same with Warren. There's a lot I can do in this area. And this is, this is the thing. This is why I wanted to focus in Philadelphia, by the way. Not because I knew there was a lot to do in this area, but because I am dealing with a handful of cities and there's like entire sections of the map that I can go deal with later. And then we get the joy of connecting all those together later on with, you know, regional trains and, and intercity trains and passengers and all that stuff. It's very exciting and I'm very much looking forward to it. It's just, it's going to take a little while to get there, especially since it's what, episode five and it's only 19 or sorry 1865 yeah at some point we'll probably increase the, the 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 rate at which time passes but for now i'm gonna enjoy the 1800s so while all of this is going on here and while we are making a bit of money here and there and while this thing has loaded up on a bit of fuel and a single single solitary piece of slag uh, which by the way it's one of those words that, as as someone from the UK, it's always kind of funny. Um, anyway, <laughs> moving on from that particular topic. Uh, yeah, we, we're in a bit of a pickle. There's, this needs to be more efficient, but so does this, because it turns out we have a hell of a surplus of um, tools. So I, I'm almost wondering if I do want to sacrifice the efficiency, as it were, of that line. Because here's the thing, right? These guys run full, okay? So this guy's coming down here with four units of steel and then loads up on four, you know, because one steel is two tools, so loads up on four tools, brings it into Laredo, who isn't even getting enough tools, quite frankly. So <laughs> I'm almost wondering if a little line back and forth here would be good and then a little line back and forth here. Alternatively, I mean, we could take some of these tools that are getting made and ship them out elsewhere, but I'd, I'd rather focus in this region right now. So, I think that's maybe what I'm gonna do. I think that's maybe what we have to do. So let's have a look here and let's keep this pinned for a second. Uh, so we're looking at Steel Tools Laredo. So if I manage this line and I take out West Street, we now have, once the autosave's done, uh, we should now just have a back and forth that is no longer uh, tools to Laredo. It's just steel and tools. So if we then do a new line, which we can do here, we're going to need to get another platform for it, but we just have this go, I think it was to here, essentially, or was it there? I don't remember which one. I think it was that one. Um... So we do that, right? So that's that's probably fair enough. Um, this is it being is it being a little bit weird for? That's that's kind of odd. Um, let me just very quickly configure this thing uh, with another cargo platform because it looked like it was kind of misbehaving there. And if we go back to the line manager, we're looking at this one here. We want to manage that line and we want to say uh, platform one, please. So now it loops around. Now it's okay. We want to say you are going to be loading up on uh, tools down here. You're going to be unloading everything. And this is just going to be road cargo, a Laredo, and it's going to be, I guess, tools. And that's fine. So we'll make this guy the same blue. And then the frequency of this needs to be half of the frequency of the steel delivery. The rate needs to be double. Uh, so if I bring up my line manager again, I go to this guy. So, uh, steel to tools is, is what right now? It's 28 
104. So the rate needs to be 56, essentially, on this new line. So if I buy a vehicle and I go to here and I buy one and I paint it blue and I put it on the Laredo tools line, that's a start. Okay. So Laredo tools is here. It has a rate of three. It needs to be 56. So I can duplicate you, which is a rate of six. I can duplicate you again, which gives us a rate of 12. Duplicating you again gives us a rate of 23. Duplicating you again gives me a rate of 46. And then if I go and grab, say, four vehicles, duplicate those, gives me a rate of 58. Okay. That's fine. I want to sell one vehicle. That brings that down to 55, which is perfect. Uh, the frequency is 53, whereas the steel is... 104 that should be fine though because this is about half of that yeah that is that is fine uh so that is now set up and that will go and do its thing and the tools unfortunately all the tools that we had have just been have, have vanished into the void but at the very least we will have a little bit more of an efficient uh setup here so that's kind of what we're looking for i could of course, make this more efficient by getting rid of this like loop here and just connecting this straight into Laredo. And that might save me money in the long term because I suppose doing that would mean I could have less vehicles. So yeah, let's um let's look at doing that. I've got a hundred thousand. I hope that's enough to do what I want to do. Uh so if I start here, I want to come straight across. 46,000 is all right. We'll come out uh, at roughly a right angle there. And we can curve like this. So that gives us that sharper connection. Uh, then this guy is going to come in a nice straight line right about there. This guy is going to come out right about there. And we'll do a nice little curve, something like that. So that works. That gives us the same connections and all that. It just works out a little bit more efficiently. Uh, and then looking at my lines, that probably makes the Laredo tools line a little bit more efficient. Yeah, it has a rate of 66 now, which is too frequent, I think. Well, that needed to be 56. But what I can do is go in and get rid of some vehicles now. So I can go in and sell like those two. And that brings it down to 59. If I sell one more... That brings it down to 55. So again, we're back to exactly where we need to be with fewer vehicles, which means I'm spending less money on upkeep and I'm getting the same throughput. So basically spending the money to make the better road is and was the smart call here, I guess. I guess that's what I'm getting at. I guess we'll find out is what we'll do. I don't know if it actually was the smart call, but we'll see. I'm sure it's fine. And then looking elsewhere, this train is coming through and making 152,000. We had some slag dropped off here along with some fuel and it heads out and does its thing. It's only a single unit of slag, so it's not really going to, you know, do much for production down here. But eventually we should see more of it coming through. We should see production be, yeah, a little bit more efficient here. So it'll, again, it's going to be a matter of time and uh, patience before we start seeing miracles and tremendous amounts of money off of this train line. But in time, hopefully, we do see miracles and massive amounts of money off of that train line. That's the goal, right? That's the, uh, that is the, the long-term goal there. I'm also realizing that I could absolutely get rid of this terminus station and push it through to, like, Salinas or Warren and we could put a little station in here as like a passenger station for Philly. And we could almost do the same here. It'd be a bit of a distance. Just keep running this thing all the way up the coast. That'd be kind of cool. I might... I might have to do that at some point. Although, to be honest, this, this track, even if I don't do that, will probably double at some point as a passenger line. So if I put like a passenger train station here, it just runs out and connects to this track. And, you know, breaks off in certain places. Maybe. I don't know. I'm, I might, again, I might be getting carried away. I might be getting ahead of myself. I probably very much am. I just, I just want to see this idea work, man. That's, that's all I want. 
I've got to be honest, it's really relaxing just watching these trains go by. It'd be even better if it didn't stutter in the middle of an autosave. <laughs> I feel like every time I start talking, the game autosaves almost every single time. Uh, the other exciting thing is that this guy is about to drop off, drop off a bunch of slag for $442,000. So that is eventually going to get turned into a bunch of construction materials, which is lovely. So that line is starting to do what we need it to do. We have 20 slag waiting up here already with more on the way. It was almost a Star Wars quote. What is it? 200,000 clones ready with a million more on the way or something like that. I, I don't remember. It, episode, it was Attack of the Clones. All right. It was the worst Star Wars movie. And yeah, I'm going to go there. All right. We're going we're gonna to very briefly touch on this because I feel like I haven't talked about it enough recently. Attack of the Clones is the worst Star Wars movie. I know people like to like to, you know, crap all over the Phantom Menace, but the Phantom Menace gave us Darth Maul. All right. Phantom Menace gave us Darth Maul. It gave us one of the best lightsaber duels, whereas Attack of the Clones. Huh? Other than the Battle of Geonosis was pretty boring. I'm just saying it was pretty it was pretty dull, pretty dull. The the fight at the end, boring. I'm going to say it boring. The Yoda part was kind of cool. The rest of it was boring. A really boring movie. You could skip it. And really, it wouldn't make much of a difference other than, like, the Battle of Geonosis. You could skip the rest of it. Anyway, now that I've got that off my chest, um, I can't help but notice that we do, in fact, seem to be making money. Which is good. It's very good. I'm kind of hoping that it is exponential. I'm hoping that the train I, I feel like if i added another train to this line we would start to see some really amazing things because the rate is 40 at the minute and i feel like the rate needs to be it needs to be higher i feel like if i duplicate the train obviously it'll go up to about 80 and i feel like moving the oil and the the fuel and the slag and all that around would be you know better if we did it faster. So I might have to do that. I might very well have to do that. Uh, I do want to see what have you got at the minute. So you're doing your usual delivery of 21 oil to this place. That is how much? 136,000. Okay. Looking at this, do we have a surplus? Meat food Philly. We do have a bit of a surplus of this. So let's start just assessing that line as well. So uh, meat food Philly is 26. And then what's the other one? Grain, livestock, meat is 26. Interesting. So, hmm. Do we maybe just want to spend a bunch of money getting more vehicles for both those lines? So if I go to, let me, let me sort by name real quick. So meat, food, Philly. So, so they're the same is is my thinking um the ratio what was the ratio on this so it's one grain to one livestock one livestock to one meat one meat to two food and then the food's getting split between fargo and philadelphia so if i was to go in and i was to go to grain livestock meat manage vehicles we have 14 of them one two three four five six and duplicate that gives us 20 vehicles looking at that line we're now looking at a rate of 36 which is good i kind of want that to be 50 though just i i like round numbers so give me another six of those that gives us 47 Give me one more, and that gives us 49. All right, so not as good as I was hoping for, but it'll do. Give me one, two, three, four, five, six of these guys. Duplicate. This comes to 30. Duplicate again. 35. Again, 40. Again, 45. And again, 50. All right. So that line is ridiculous. There is a ridiculous number of vehicles. There's 62 in total on the Meat Food Philly line. But 
that should be okay. We should start just seeing more food and meat going in and out of Philadelphia, which is obviously the goal. It is also our most profitable line, so that's good. The train is yet to be remarkably profitable. But in theory, the train, yeah, it's going to have bricks to pick up on the way back now. So the train should start to be more regularly making money, which is what we want it to do. So this thing's coming down here with a bunch of slag, a bunch of oil. It'll be picking up, you know, it'll be dropping all that off. It'll make, you know, close to $500,000. It'll pick these bricks up. That will then go up to this station here by Laredo. That goes into Laredo, and Laredo starts getting the things it needs. Which, by the way, it's getting 40% of the supply of tools that it wants. The reason I want to focus on getting the towns the things they need is mostly because, plain and simple, uh, it helps them grow. I want to see if I can make Philadelphia grow into, like, this huge town. It's kind of that simple. I want to just see what I can do with it. Because, I... I don't know. I... I always say that I'm trying to, you know, grow a cool looking city. I mean, I can't, I mean, you, you can, if you really want to design a city in this game, that is a thing you can do. You can go in and build the roads and it will sort of add roads here and there as well. But I just want to see if I can encourage Philly to grow, you know, big and strong. Now, like I said, it is kind of exciting. The train's coming in here making $457,000. And it is full of bricks with one left over. So we have a little bit of excess down here. That's actually really cool. That's actually really important because that now means that in theory, this train should make about half a million dollars at both ends of the line. That's a big deal. That's, that's actually a really, really big deal. That train line should now be considerably more profitable. Hopefully. And as the train pulls in, hopefully becomes $459,000. That's pretty good money. That is pretty good money. So I was right. It is about half a million at either end of that line. And that is good. That is really, really good. I've also gone ahead, by the way, and uh, expanded Laredo just a little bit. I had some fun with some roads here. So we have more lanes and all that stuff for traffic to kind of figure out what it wants to do here. And uh, hopefully that's going to be good, I guess. Traffic sort of goes straight through or it goes to the left. It does whatever. We've got these roads that sort of go around Laredo just a little bit. And uh, I'd be tempted, actually, to go in here with this road and come straight across here. And I kind of want to connect it to this bit. So I want to do this for a second. I want to bring that road right back. I want to bring this guy sort of straight out. And somehow, some way, I want to connect these guys together. I'm not too sure how I'm going to do it yet. But basically that, I want to go with a, you know, bit of a, a, a thicker road, maybe towards the end though. Uh, so we'll do the thin section of road with the curve. Maybe coming straight off of there. I don't know how much I like how that looks, but I guess it sort of does the job. So that comes out like that. We can go and upgrade like that bit and that bit and that bit and that bit. And that gives us some slightly chunkier roads. Uh, maybe actually we take those bits out completely. We can sort of redo this entire curve here to make it look a little bit better. So we'll just do, I guess, a country road like this. We usually use the thin one, though. So we'll do like a little little country road there. And how does this all connect together? I guess this bit's probably not needed right now. But I suppose what I'll do is just that right there. And that gives us something kind of decent. I think that looks all right. And then if I did want to upgrade it, I could upgrade a couple of little sections, I suppose. I don't know that we need to do this, but I'll upgrade some sections and I'll upgrade uh, upgrade that bit. There we go. So that gives us a nice road that punches straight through. This road's no longer really used here. And I imagine that'll help traffic a little bit. Right? Because they can now just go completely around the center of town. Traffic coming back obviously goes straight through it, but I would imagine that'll help. And I guess at this point, all I need to do is sit and wait for money oh no this is going away 
Oh, that's a bit of a disaster. Am I losing anything else right now? Because I, I am low on earnings at the minute. Uh, that might be the roads thing I'm doing. I just, my biggest fear right now is like, I guess something like this meat processing plant going away. That would be disastrous. That would be absolutely devastating to my entire business right now. I'm wondering if... No, I'm overthinking it. I was going to say I'm wondering if I do need another train. I do. I'm, I'm overthinking it. I'm getting carried away. I'm just slightly concerned that it does drop down here, but I want to see if it ever drops into the, the negative before it gets to Laredo. Because if it doesn't, we're actually going to be in a really good spot. So it's down to 84,000. It's back up somehow to 115. So that's all right. And it comes in here. It drops off a bunch of resources. I get about half, well, 300,000. And yeah, it goes back up to the top. So it never actually dropped into the negative, which is good. So manage vehicle, not enough money. <laughs> Are you kidding me? How much do I need to do? How, how much is this? Friggin' train. Two million. Not enough. That's actually... I'm, I'm slightly surprised that I have a two million dollar train. I didn't realize I had a two million dollar train. I, how much is it? 2.3 million per vehicle. All right. This better be worth it. Getting another one of those really better be worth it. Because I'm... Man, I, I think I need to wait for it to come back down here to Salinas before I can afford another one. And then with that delivery coming in down here in Salinas, we get close to half a million. I can go ahead and select the vehicle. I can duplicate the vehicle. We're nearly broke again. But the good news is we did this time have a surplus of bricks. We do... Uh, we do have... You know what? Let me do a little something cheeky here. Let me tell you to stop for a second i want you to just wait there because what i want is for this train to be up in laredo before i let this other one go so that they're sort of at opposite ends of the line and so they're not kind of running next to each other because i think doing that is is going to help us out a little bit I do think what I'm going to have to do, though, is look at this line and manage it because in Pueblo West, we are... What are we doing? Let's have a look here. Minimum stop 30, maximum stop 90. In Salinas, full load any, minimum stop 30, maximum stop 90. So that way, at either end of the line, both trains are going to stop and wait, and that should keep their spacing hopefully decent right that's that's kind of the goal here is to keep the spacing you know sort of okay so we'll see how this goes like i said once this guy gets to um up by laredo we'll go ahead and cut the other one loose and let them both go do their th uh, thing and then looking here you are sitting with a bit of a surplus of tools which is fine are those lines still losing money they really are and i just i'm I am so surprised by that. It is weird to me that they're not that profitable. So steel to tools is a rate of 33, frequency of 89, Laredo tools 68. Oh. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Um, sort by name. Steel to tools 33, double that 66. So tools is working a bit more efficiently than the steel providing it. So if I go in here and manage vehicles, and I said, give me two more of those. Steel to tools is now 41, double is 82. So that should be okay. I think. I think we should now be in a spot where I think we're doing okay. Um, have I done the math backwards on this? Hold on. No, I don't, I don't think I have because steel comes in so this should be 82 otherwise we're gonna have a surplus of tools so if i've done this the way i think i've done it we should start seeing a surplus of tools and that's actually what we want to see so we'll leave that for a minute and we'll see what happens uh this other train by the way is on its way to laredo with a full 
load of crude oil. So we'll pin that window for a second and we'll come down here and grab this guy. And as soon as train two sets off from Laredo, which will be momentarily, we can go ahead and allow train one to start moving again. And that should put us in a good spot. So train two is heading out. Let's go ahead as soon as he hits this little bit here and allow train one to move. So train one's heading out. They're both heading towards each other. So we should now, in theory, have better money from that line. We're going to be running at a loss for a while. Obviously, we did just spend millions on a new train, but I'm I'm hopeful for good things here. I might I might be an idiot. Based on the, the prison architect video I put out recently, I am an idiot. But I might be lucky. That's that's <laughs> that's what I might be. I'm an idiot. But I'm a lucky I'm a, I'm a lucky idiot. Also, my throat, my throat's really so my throat, my voice keeps cutting out. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. My throat's kind of sore. I've been up all night. It's really warm. The room's kind of humid, and it's getting to my throat. All right, that's why my voice is all over the place right now. <laughs> so, wait, why did you? Oh God, I thought the game crashed again. I thought the game crashed or the power went out again. I was gonna absolutely lose my mind. Fortunately, I don't have much of a mind to lose. <laughs> Why am I taking this self-deprecating turn? What am I doing? What am, what's going on? <laughs>